My name is Alois, and I've been a Challenger Riven player since Season 7. And every season since then, I have managed to maintain a win rate above 60%, with my games being played in Challenger ELO. I've reached Wagrown Riven numerous times, and right now I'm statistically the number 1 and number 2 Riven in the world. I've been top 20 in most seasons, peaking rank 11 in Season 13 with a 66% win rate. I've gathered a ton of information on Riven over the course of the last 7 years, and in this guide, I will teach you all how to consistently perform on Riven, unlock your true potential, and reach your dream rank. Let's start off with the summoners. First things first, I take Flesh on Riven every game. This is not up for debate. Flesh simply makes Riven extremely versatile, and without it, you would lose a lot of kill opportunities in the laning phase and have less team fighting windows. And as of right now, Flesh Ignite is by far the best option for Riven, and I will briefly explain why. Riven as a champion functions the best when she is ahead. However, if you are even or behind on Riven, depending on enemy team comp, it can be extremely hard to play. And this is why I very often will take Ignite, because I play to win my lane and get a lead. And Ignite gives you a lot more kill windows and allows you to snowball a lot better. And it makes Riven very scary to lane against. Ignite is also a very good tool to deny sustain in certain matchups such as Aatrox, Irelia and Vladimir. It's important that you also learn how to use Ignite. Very often it's better to use Ignite early during a fight as it will deny your opponents the sustain and can get them to low HP faster, allowing you to get in the execution range for your ultimate ability. Ignite also has a really good pairing with Nimbus Cloak. The burst movement speed you get allows you to gap close to your opponents without having to use your abilities when you time it properly. And one thing that a lot of players don't know is that Ignites also count as a Conqueror stack and keep up the Conqueror duration. And this is very useful and you can use this mechanic in a lot of situations to your advantage. For example, you have like a small trade and then you back out of the trade and then you use Ignite to keep up your Conqueror stacks and then with the movement speed you get from Nimbus Cloak, you can get close again, you have your abilities back up and then you can create more RLM windows for yourself. For other summer options, you should take TP on Riven into matchups that are very hard because in these matchups you often do not have the wave control. And this results in you being stuck under your turret and only receiving waves or your opponent can poke you down and set up a freeze and you simply cannot approach the wave anymore. So to overcome this, we take teleport to stay even and to get off out of these precarious wave states and this is usually very good in the hard range matchups such as Cannon, Quinn and Jace or into neutralizing tanks such as Poppy and Gragas. These are pretty much the only options I take for summoner spells, so let's move on to the runes. The main keystone for Riven will always be Conqueror, as Riven can stack it up pretty fast and this is where most of her damage comes from. For the other runes in precision, we'll always go Triumph and Last Stand, as they are simply the best, so you never have to change these. The only thing that is really worth talking about is when should you take Alacrity and when should you take Tenacity. My personal preference will always be Alacrity, as it makes Riven fast combo, more on that later, much smoother. So, I will always aim to play Alacrity, unless Tenacity is simply too valuable because of enemy champions. I will take Tenacity when the enemy team has forms of CC that cannot be outplayed, such as Leona, Lulu, Fatalsticks, Pantheon and Gragas and so forth. So pretty much most examples of point click CC or undodgeable CC, especially if they can layer multiple undodgeable abilities. For the secondary tree, Sorcery is the best option for Riven and I take it about 95% of my games. Transcendence gives Riven one of her most important stats, which is Ability Haste. At level 5 and at level 8, it grants you 5 Ability Haste, giving you a total of 10 at level 8. And this already helps Riven very early on in the landing phase, simply making it the best option. So, whenever you are running Sorcery, you're always choosing Transcendence. And as explained before, if you are running Flash plus Ignite, you should also always run Nimbus Cloak secondary, because gap closing is so crucial on Riven. And having a ranged spell that allows you to gap close makes Riven really really hard to deal with. So that's the setup I like the most. If you are running Flash plus TP however, because of difficult or hard to kill matchups, then the Nimbus Cloak drops in priority and you can choose between Gathering Storm to scale into the mid to late, or Nullifying Orb into AP Heavy Topside. The second tree that is worth talking about is Resolve. Now you can choose for Resolve in the melee matchups that are quite hard to contest in the early game, such as Set, Rankton and Darius. Since they are so strong in the early game, you can take Bone Plating to match some strengths so that you can actually contest the first waves. Unflinching is a very good rune to match with Bone Plating because it gives tenacity based on missing health, so it's very good against stuns like the Set E or the Rankton W. And into the hard rage matchups such as Cannon, Quinn and Jace, you can opt for second wind plus unflinching, allowing you to stay much more through these matchups. And again, you can use the unflinching to deal with their CC abilities. 
For the shards and runes, I take double adaptive against bruisers and tanks that I can look to kill and fight in the early laning phase. So good examples would be Fiora, Aatrox and Sion. And against a lot of the range matchups, you can opt for ability haste and runes, as this allows you to have your abilities up more often to either block damage with your E, and ability haste is also very useful to range champions as it allows you to close the gap between them much easier. In some matchups, both are good. Versus gameplay, for example, you can go for double adaptive to play aggressive, or you can choose to go ability haste to have your E up more often to block his Q, so you can choose for yourself what you like the best in these kind of matchups. I generally speaking will also take resistances as my rune options, so choose depending on the matchups that you play. Now that we know what setup to take, let's take a closer look at the item options. Knowing how to itemize correctly is one of the most important things to learn in order to have success with your rune. This section will be a bit lengthy, but it will also help you a lot in understanding my thought processes and ultimately you learn how to do it yourself. Now let's first start talking about the starting items. I only use two options and they will depend on your summoner setup plus your matchup. The most common item start at the moment is Longsword plus 3 potions. This start is the best whenever you're running Flesh plus Ignite. Now the reason why I like this start so much is because it really complements an aggressive style. Very often, your opponents will only have 1 potion, and if you do any even health traits in the early game, you will have 3 potions against your opponent only having 1, giving you an edge early on in the laning phase. I will sometimes buy a Dorn's Blade on my first recall, so I can stat check my opponents much better. The second option is Doran's Shield. I take this into range matchup and against neutralizing tanks, as my goal very often in those lanes is to not fall behind. For example, in matchups like Gragas, he will run out of mana faster than I run out of health, making it just a really good option in these kind of matchups. And of course against range champion, it's always good for the sustain. With starting items covered, let's take a look at the rest of our build. There are currently two main build options and I will briefly cover both and then dive deeper into it. The build I use the most right now is Hydra, into Black Cleaver, into Mythic, and this Mythic will vary depending on the game. I take this in around 80% of my games. The second option is Gordrick Rush, very often also follow up by a Black Cleaver. I take this route around 20% of my games. Now let's talk about the benefits and the downside of both builds and learn how to make the correct decisions. I will first cover my thoughts on Gordrick Rush, since this is the option that I use around 20% of my games, making it easier to explain when this is good. I rush Gore Drinker whenever I face top sides that don't scale too well and are very scary to deal with in the early game. Examples of top sides like these are Olaf plus Vi or Pantheon and Rengar. I also take Gore Drinker into a matchup that play for execution ranges such as Garen and Urgot with their ultimate abilities. Gore Drinker has the best build path out of all the items for Riven as it has very nice components. You can opt for raw 55 AD with Whip and Call Fields, and at the same time you can build a little bit defensive with the Ruby Crystal and the Kennel Gem option. All in all, Gore Drinker is a great item, but the biggest downside is that it has no scaling. Especially after durability changes, this item has fallen off because every champion in the game now has more health and resistances. And Gore Drinker offers nothing in terms of scaling, it only has raw stats. The mythic passive is very lackluster, and it only gives 3 ability haste and 75 flat health for every legendary item that you get. The benefit from Gore Drinker is that you can build Cleaver second and spike faster into the mid game. Black Cleaver is very nice to complement with Gore Drinker, as it gives the percentage armor penetration that you need to start dealing good damage. For every other scenario, I like to rush Veravinus Hydra. This item is very nice for Riven, as it makes her extremely efficient and gives her a lot of extra damage. The build path for Hydra is a bit more Feast or Famine, as it is raw damage and nothing else. And on top of that, it is quite inefficient until you finish it. For example, a pickaxe gives 25 AD, but a finished Tiamat costs an extra 325 gold, and it doesn't give you any extra AD other than the 25 AD that you already had from the pickaxe. And a Vampiric Scepter gives you only 15 AD for 900 gold, but you can get 30 AD by buying 3 longswords and only spending 150 gold extra. So it's very important to build accordingly when going for Hydra first. And I always look to get a pickaxe plus triple longsword or call fits first and then I finish the Hydra. After completing my Hydra, I will very often look for a Black Cleaver second. And this is because Black Cleaver gives me all the stats that I lack from rushing Hydra. And it is equally strong as a mythic item. You can get 300 HP, 50 AD, 30 ability haste and 2 unique passives with one of them giving armor penetration. One of the downsides of rushing Hydra is that I am playing on base HP and therefore it is very easy to one shot me. Another problem that I have is that I only have raw damage but no armor penetration. So Black Cleaver is the perfect solution to complement the weaknesses from the Revenant's Hydra as it gives me both tankiness and the percentage damage. 
After Hydra and Cleaver, we get to the mythic options. So let's take a look at the possible options. There are currently three mythics besides Gordrinker that you are able to play, and I will go through the benefits of each mythic and in what situations I would use them. Starting off with the mythic that I use the most, it is the Eclipse. The biggest benefit from Eclipse is the Mythic Passive. It provides you with extra percentage armor penetration and movement speed, allowing Riven to deal very well with tanks and also still be able to one-shot any carry on the backline. If Riven gets these three items, she becomes really broken and she can deal with literally anything. Generally speaking, I will go for the setup if there is at least one tank or multiple steel plated caps being built by the enemy team. And in this current meta, tanks are very common, so I will very often have these three core items as my staple build. If there are no tanks on the enemy team, then Duskblade Draktar becomes my preferred option. I personally don't build Yumus, as I think the item doesn't offer as much as the counterparts like Eclipse and Duskblade do for Riven. So versus Squishy Combs, I take Duskblade. Duskblade has received quite some big buffs and it functions very well with Riven's playstyle. First of all, the Mythic Passage gives you 5 ability haste and movement speed, which are very good stats for Riven. On top of that, you have an invulnerability passive that has a 10 second cooldown, which can make Riven extremely hard to deal with. Riven can just dive to the backline, assassinate a target, get invulnerable, and try and regain a good position. And the second passive that Dustblade provides is that your abilities do extra damage based on your opponent's missing health. And this stacks with Riven's already built in extra damage on her ult, depending on how low your opponent is. So this allows Riven to do a lot more damage with her R2 ability. Since we usually only go for Dustblade into combs that don't build armor, you can also opt to skip out on the Black Cleaver. So in those instances, we often go Hydra into Dustblade into something like a Death Stance. Lastly, we have Even Shroud. Although this is a support item, you're able to build this on bruises as well. The stats you gain for 2300 gold is actually quite good, as you can get 20 ability haste, HP, and armor and magic assist, which is very rare for an item to give. On top of that, the unique passive you gain is very nice. Every time you either immobilize a champion or you get immobilized, your enemies take 10% extra damage, and this has no cooldown, so you can repeatedly proc this passive. Generally speaking, I will build this when I have to become some sort of frontline for my team, or to avoid the burst heavy champions such as Syndra, Kha'Zix, and Any. This item is also extremely good if your enemies have no form of percent of penetration or true damage, as your resistances will be super strong against their items. Now that we know when to take what mythic options, let's quickly summarize everything with some examples. In this first example, you can see a perfect game of the core build. Eclipse is good here because of the amount of armor that the enemy team has, and I will always go Hydra, into Cleaver, into Eclipse in these kind of games. The next game is a perfect example of when to go Duskblade, as they had very little armor in their team. And as you can see, I even skipped Cleaver, as most of the champions were never going to be building armor in this game anyways. The third game is a very good example of when we should be building Gore Drinker. I take Gore Drinker here to be able to lane a bit easier against the Vi and Olaf combo, and I would still outskill them later in the game, so here it's very nice to use it. Lastly, this is a perfect example of a game where Eventrout is good, as I was quite behind this game, they have a lot of burst, and I have 4 champions in my team that can benefit from the damage buffs, so this was a perfect game to whip out the Eventrout. These are all the mythic options that I use on Riven. I don't use any other mythics, so they are simply not worth talking about. Now all there's left is boots options and legendary items to finish our setup. So let's take a look into the boots options first. For boots on Riven, Lucidity boots are always a good option. Not only does it give you 20 ability in flat, it also refunds 12% of your summoner cooldown duration. And this will really help you get more kills and snowball hard. You can even build these before finishing your Hydra sometimes, especially if you have both your summoners up when you purchase it. I've made so many kills just trading flashes with my opponent, but because I have Lucidity boots, I will get my flashback up much faster, I surprise them with it, and I end up getting free kills. You can never go wrong building Lucidity boots on Riven. Once you have Hydra or Gore Drinker plus your CDR boots, you have around 50 to 55 ability haste, and you can already start permanently Q delaying your Qs, which is one of the things that make Riven so hard to play against, and this is also where most of your kills end up coming from. I take CDR boots first in 95% of my games. Merc Treads are a good option in specific matchups such as Kragas. It really counters his entire kit, so I will often build it against this champion in specific. If enemies have multiple layers of undodgeable CC, I can also opt for the Merc Treads. In games like this, I will very often still go Lucidity Boots first, but then later on into the mid to late game, I switch over to the Merc Treads. I rarely find myself building steel plated caps, 
as I think there are other very good armor options such as Death Stance and Guardian Angel for Riven. The only games where you should buy the steel plated caps is whenever you are not able to build Death Stance because the enemy team has too much true damage. So versus champ is like Fiora and Camille for example. In these games, the steel plated caps are by far your best options. Now let's talk about the legendary items. Very often, we will already have Hydra Cleaver Eclipse, or Gorging Cleaver, or Hydra Cleaver Eventrout. So we just have to finish up our build depending on the scenario in the game and the team comp that we play against. The first legendary item I want to talk about is Maul of Lamortius. This item is very straightforward. If you are versing heavy AP damage threat, such as Rumble, Annie, or Akali, you can always opt for Maul. It has very good stat and it plays very well with the rest of our items. The Guardian Angel. This item is almost always my fourth item in the game. The Guardian Angel makes Riven really hard to deal with as she can just dive into your backline. You can't really ignore Riven in the backline, but at the same time they don't really want to focus you because you have a Guardian Angel. And even if you kill her, she will just get back to life and have all of her abilities back up. Also, just sitting on a stopwatch can very often completely change the outcome of the fight, so I really love this item a lot. Soraljas Grudge. This item is, generally speaking, just very good whenever enemy team has very high resistances. I like building this item to be sticky against certain champions like Singed, Udyr and Mundo. I will get this as my fourth item whenever I have versed very tanky team comps so I can still shred through them. Death Stance. Generally speaking, you want to build Death Stance later on in the game versus team comps that don't have true damage. The Death Stance passives makes you only take 70% of damage taken instantly and 30% of the damage you receive over time. And you are able to shield and heal this overtime taking damage and that is why this item is so strong on Riven. However, true damage completely negates the passive and you still take 100% of the damage, so don't build it against very heavy true damage comps. Okay, now you guys should have enough information on how to correctly itemize in every scenario and now let's move on to abilities and combos. I first want to shortly cover Riven's abilities and some tricks that you can do with them. You can use both your Q and your W to animation cancel your auto attack, which is what Riven is mostly famous for, as she has a lot of animation cancels. So you can buffer your auto attack and then use an ability and your auto attack will still go through, but your ability goes through as well, it cancels your auto attack animation, but it still deals damage from your ability and the auto attack. For your E ability, at the end of the duration of Riven's E ability, you are able to perform a double cast or even a triple cast where you are using multiple abilities at once. So for example, you can use your E, you wait a bit, and then you can use W, Q at once, or you E, wait a bit, and you can use ult and Q at once, hiding the animations. That is what is called a double cast. For your ultimate ability, there are two things to note as well. First of all, your ultimate deals more damage depending on how low your opponent is, so you will generally speaking be using your R2 ability at the end of your combo. Your ultimate also increases all the damage, but also the range of both your Q and your W. So when you are fighting, you should use your R1 before all ending, using your entire combo with extra range and with extra damage, and then you finish up your opponent with R2 ability. Alright, with that being said, Let's take a look at the combos. People really overcomplicate Riven and her combos. There are three main combos that you need to master in order to have success with Riven, and they are not as hard as they seem. They are the fast combo, the Q delay, and double casting. Now the first combo we'll take a look into is the fast combo, which is literally Q auto, Q auto, and Q auto three times in a row as fast as possible. This combo is by far the most important to master first as you'll be using this in every fight when you're playing Riven. This is the combo where most of your damage will come from and where being fast and consistent will be very very rewarding. So let's dive a bit deeper on how the fast combo works. You can use your Q on Riven in two different ways. You can use it as a dash to go for distance and alternatively whenever you're using your Q next to a target you won't dash forward and since you're not dashing forward you're able to use your Q ability faster. Which will help in the fast combo process as it speeds up the animation process. Like I explained in abilities, you can use your Q as an auto attack cancel. So, shorter Q time also means more auto attacks. Now, let's do these combos in two different ways. First, I will be just standing near my target, doing the fast combo as I explained, which is Q plus an auto attack three times in a row. This isn't as fast as it could be, although you are cancelling your auto attack every time with your Q animation. But there is also a way to do it even faster, which is Q auto attack, 
click on the ground and repeat this three times. And this click on the ground is vital as it recovers Riven's Q animation. Let me explain. After every auto attack, there is always a window that you need to recover. But as we explained, you're able to bypass this auto attack recovery by using your Q, thus cancelling the recovery animation. Similar to auto attacks, Riven's Q also has a recovery period as it will take some time for her to use her next auto attack after using her Q. You can bypass that by clicking on the ground, so this way we're actually able to cancel both your auto attack animation with your Q, and you can cancel your Q animation by clicking on the ground after the auto attack. Now, like I said, this is by far the most important combo to master on Riven, and the way you can learn this is by practicing it in champion pool, by spamming games, but I personally also learned it by playing Riven jungle, as you're often fighting stationary targets. You have to clear as fast as possible, so that helped me in learning to master it quickly. Another very important concept I want to touch on next is Riven's Q and how to manage her Q cooldown properly. The way that her Q works is on the first cast that you use it, your cooldown will start refreshing. Since it has 3 charges, you're able to delay all charges in between uses and if you do it properly, your Q will be on a much cooldown afterwards. You're able to use this in all parts of the game to trick your opponent because it will be very hard for them to time when your Q is going to be back up and this is what I call Q delay. The most important part, however, is that once you have 50 ability haste, you're going to be able to start chaining your Q abilities. A lot of Riven players don't utilize this trick to its full potential, but if you do, it will make it so much easier for you to create all-in windows and join fights properly, and I'll explain why. So the goal you want to be aiming for is whenever you're just laning, be it still in lane phase or in the side lane, or before joining any skirmish, if possible, you want to be calculating your distance to that fight with your Q delay. Now the reason why this is so good is because it basically allows you to get a free gap close. So a prime example would be you just standing in lane, use your first two Qs, fully delayed and you just hop around, maybe farm some minions in the meantime to mask your real intention. Then on your third Q, if your opponent steps up a little bit too far, you will use E plus your third Q or maybe even E old Q to gap close to your opponent and if you delay it properly, your Q cooldown will be back up again pretty much instantly. Now this is perfect because this is where all your damage comes from because you will already be in melee ranged and then you can use your fast combo to deal out all your DPS. This is the best way to set up an all-in always. So I'm Q delaying again. Q delay. W auto, EQ out, right? As you see, I'm continuously using this trade pattern every time to try and whittle them down. And this is the trade pattern that you guys also should be using. It's very hard for him to do anything against this. You see right here? W auto. EQ out. I just struck him for 170 damage, right? But this is already very nice. So I Q the link again. And now I Q into him again. He uses his Q as well. I'm Q into him. And he hooks me. It doesn't matter. He's already lost. And I just kill him. Straight up, right? Not hard. Q delay. My Q abilities are coming back up as well. I chunked him a little bit. His bomb plating is down. He uses his Q as well. I get on top of him. And honestly, he's, yeah, he's already a goner. There we go. That easy. Lastly, let's talk about the double cast. The double cast is where at the end of your E ability, you're able to perform multiple abilities at once. So you either E into WQ or you use E into old Q. Let's first take a look at the combo where we use our Q and W at the same time. You will mostly use this as a burst combo as you're using both abilities at the same time and you're not doing an auto attack in between them. You can use this to push a wave a bit faster for example. Although you can't auto attack in between the Q and W abilities, you are able to do an auto attack before and after you cast both abilities. And this is the highest burst combo that Riven can do. And you can use this combo to finish off low HP targets that are in the execution range of this combo. It goes like this. You E to gap close, then you auto attack plus WQ at once, you click on the ground and you auto attack again. You can even combine this with flash as well which would be E into flash, then buff your auto attack, plus instantly use W and Q, you click on the ground to reset your Q recovery, and then you auto attack again. This is probably one of the hardest combos for Riven to do, but it feels extremely satisfying to pull off.
Another use of the double cast is whenever you're looking to all in, you can cancel the animation of your R1 by using your Q ability. So you can E into old Q. And this way it's a smoother transition and you will instantly be ready to fight. And this is what I always use as the Q laying as you want to use your ult at the start of the fight. You can optimize this combo by doing E ult plus flash Q instantly, W auto attack and R2 as a burst combo to kill people on low HP. Alright, with all the combos out of the way, let's talk about how you want to play Riven. Let's start off with the laning phase. Riven as a champion generally doesn't really function well if she's even or behind in the game. You really want to get ahead and learn how to snowball on Riven. This is why we run the most aggressive setup possible and really play to win our lane and get as many resources as we can. I simply can't cover every possible matchup in this video, but I have at least 15 of Riven's hardest matchups covered as guides, so make sure to check them out here. Riven has one of the strongest level 1s in top lane, and you really want to use this strength to create a good position for yourself from the get-go. Since we are trying to snowball, we can look to invade in the early game for cheesy kills, or we try and see if we can get a trade onto our opponents before they get to lane when they're leashing, for example. Getting an early trade up like that already sets us up in a super advantageous position leading into the laning phase, so make sure you use this to your advantage. Some spots that you can do this from is hopping over the Baron Pit level 1, standing in the tri bush, or choosing in a bush that's closest to your opponent's turrets and you attack them on the first wave. Very important that we look to cheese because it's a very nice way to get ahead. One of the biggest skills to learn for any Riven player is learning how to efficiently play with level up timers. Let's say you're level 2 and you queue forward to AoE the mean securing you level 3 and also closing the gap between you and your opponent, you can instantly pick another ability and look for very favorable traits. This skill becomes even more important at level 6 and I can't even count how many kills I've gotten just utilizing this trick. The trade pattern you want to be using into most melee champions often looks like this. You queue forward to gap close or you already stand next to them whenever they're going for a last hit and then you press W plus auto attack and then you EQ out again. And you do this pattern to poke your opponents down until you can all in them. Try and avoid using your E to gap close in small trades as this is very often your ability to secure you out of the trade. In a lot of matchups like Orn, Darius and Zed, it is extremely important to keep your E up to avoid their abilities. So be cautious of that. Unless you're all ending, then of course you can use your E to gap close as you're committing yourself to the fight. Against ranged champions, it works a bit different. And I have a golden rule whenever I face against ranged champions. If you're only using your E and one of your Qs to gap close, the trade can be good. If you're using E and two Qs however, the trade will be bad for you 90% of the times because most of your damage comes from your fast combo which is your Q auto attack. And if you use two Qs to gap close, you simply don't have any damage anymore. So keep that in mind whenever you're versing ranged champions. Learning how to play your matchups will take time, but the reward is immense and will often allow you to snowball and get leads consistently, putting you in a great position. If you do fall behind however, your main goal is to try and clear as many side waves and farm as many jungle camps as you can to get back into the game. With laning out of the way, let's talk about teamfights on Riven. Teamfighting on Riven is all about preparation. Riven can have different roles in a teamfight and it will depend on two main things. What is the win condition? and what cooldowns are available. Riven as a champion is genuinely 50% stronger in any teamfight if she has flash because it gives her a lot more options and enemies always have to keep an eye on her. Riven is also much stronger if she has a Guardian Angel or a stopwatch before the teamfight. Guardian Angel basically allows Riven to commit more fights without having the fear of being one shot and you're able to get a multiple rotations of your abilities off. The same concept applies to a stopwatch and you can also use a stopwatch to dodge very crucial spells. So a very big question before joining a teamfight is, do we have flash or do we have a stopwatch and guardian angel? If the answer is yes, you can really play towards limits in teamfights and dive their backline because you have so many options and if you're a bit ahead, you can just wipe a teamfight out like this. If the answer is no, you don't have flash or stopwatch or both, very often I prefer playing a bit more reserved and try to either play front to back unless I get a really good flank position and again I can still get on top of them. Or, very often, I simply wait with joining a teamfight until I get the cooldowns or the item. Another big part of the preparation of teamfighting is, what is the win condition in the game for both teams? Sometimes, if you have a fat AD carry, it can be better for you to play to peel, as Riven has quite a good kit 
to stop assassins like Zed, for example, that are trying to get on top of your carries. So, if your AD carry is fed, you can play a bit more defensive style and try to peel for your win condition. Another example could be that you know that enemy AD carry does not have flash before a team fight, and since you have that information, your priority target will be the person without summoners or important cooldowns like a Zonyas. And if we have all cooldowns, we can choose. We can choose to dive, play front to back, depending on what is good in the situation. So before joining a team fight, try and track cooldowns and see what the win condition is and decide for yourself how to play the team fights optimally to the situation in the game. This will be different every game, but the more you practice it, the better you will get at it. So work on this. The last topic I want to cover is macro. Macro is quite the hard topic to cover in the guide, mainly because macro in general is very situational because every game has different variables. But there are some key things that I can talk about that are important for you to learn. Sidewaves into mid. Riven as a champion is very fast on the map because she can hop over walls and has a lot of dashes. Because of this, Riven is very good at clearing sidewaves, collecting them fast and grouping up. It is important that you learn to not group up mid too often and you stand there and lose efficiency and resources. Because if you do this repeatedly, you will fall behind and perhaps lose your lead or control over the game. And like I said, if you're even or behind in the game, you will not feel strong. I always try to be as efficient as possible as I can on the map, so use Riven's kit to your advantage. It is very hard to catch Riven off in the side lane because she has so many dashes. And because of your AoE damage, you can clear waves really fast and also take a lot of jungle camps. So try to always make a plan whenever you're leaving the base. So it could be something like, I'm gonna collect the side wave, I'm gonna look for a jungle camp, and then I will group up mid. Learning to think ahead and create plans will make you much more efficient on the map and make the game more clear to play. And this is how I managed to maintain high CS averages, high resources, and ultimately carry a lot of my games. Another big thing is cooldowns. Your flesh is on cooldown, or you're close to finishing a big item spike like a death sense or a guardian angel, make sure to stick to side lane and farm jungle camps until you get your spikes and your cooldown so you're well prepared for any fight. Play towards your strength and the timers for your team fight, don't blind the group and follow up your teammates, but do and think what is good for you. Alright guys, those were all the topics that I wanted to cover. However, no guide is complete without a skin to your list, so here's my personal preference for Riven skins. This is my view on Riven skins, and if you disagree, you're wrong. <laughs> Thank you all for watching this guide. I hope you learned some new stuff for Riven and top lane, and that you can implement this into your gameplay. I would much appreciate you sharing the guide if you want to help other Riven mains out. I would also appreciate it if you can give me a sub and a like if you learned something new, as the guide took quite some effort. If you want to follow my journey, I'll be fighting for the rank 1 spot in Korea soon and I stream daily over at Twitch. Come follow me there and enjoy your day guys. Peace.